Jordan is still jealous, but I think this is going to be his comeback season. Spencer is back on our screen brooding, just ugh. Olivia is back lying and hiding her feelings to make Spencer feel better. Patience is about to go on a journey that she doesn't deserve, and I think it's going to be the storyline that will stress us out for the entire season. But let's talk about it. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are watching this. Hey, y'all. Hey. So as you already read the title down below, I'm about to get into season six, episode one of All American. But before I do, y'all already know what to do. Like this video and show your girl some love. Come here, thoughts, because I know you already have them. Hit that notification bell and of course, click that subscribe button and join the Queen of the Bible. Okay, getting into this episode, it's so much to talk about, but let me start by saying that whole one year and three months time jump situation pissed me off. I was beyond upset at that because I am the type that likes to see all the chaos that leads to more chaos with each character's storyline. And I feel like there was so much to dive into within this whole one year and three months of the Vertex, especially with Olivia and Spencer and Asher being a new dad and seeing everyone help him out and navigate that. So I wish we could have gotten all of that and not skip it i feel like the time jump is going to rush the show and it has me thinking that maybe they are setting the show up for a cancellation or something i don't know but we shall see child but anyways let me start off talking about spencer and olivia's situation first because they clearly want to stress us out already and for what for what we are just tired of them and their madness Spencer and his antsy and nervous ways after not seeing Liv for a while and Liv and her secret ways after being gone for so long like we are tired of all of it y'all are freaking grown at this point just let it go and it's really getting on my nerves because where is the char character development where is it it's clearly lacking when it comes to those two it's always just those two for me though like ugh and I already see how they are trying to use the whole let's put all our cards on the table and get everything out now situation as the de development for them. But it's not enough because to be honest, they should not have to do that. And it should be flowing effortlessly. No matter how long they have been apart or lack communication with one another, they have been together long enough and been through enough to know how to navigate each other's feelings and, and speak to each other. I don't care about Liv saying she has found herself and she's this whole new Olivia Baker. That sounds good in retrospect, but you haven't changed that much. And to be honest, to me, the only thing that has changed is the fact that you are trying to remain a London girly and not be this Cali girly anymore, okay? So off rip in this episode, we know that Spencer has the opportunity to enter the NFL draft if he chooses. I personally don't think he will do it because I think there is going to be so many situations happening within the team and with the coach that will make him stay one more year because, you know, Spencer is so used to being super save a hoe and super save the world. But we will get to that bridge when we cross it. But like I said, he has the opportunity. But within all of that, a new coach is coming into the fold whose priority is to focus on Jordan. Which I can't lie, I am happy about because Jordan needs someone to take a liking to him for once. It used to be his dad, but since his dad has passed, he's just been, you know, coasting by and don't really have anyone to advocate for him. But this new coach will be. And within that, I feel like he's going to start getting exposure in some way, somehow, is going to bring problems on Spencer. And I don't know how, I don't know in what way, but I'm sure it's going to happen and we're going to see it all. Along with all of that, Spencer has to deal with his feelings about his relationship with Liv. And to be honest, I want them to once and for all end things. I do. I want them to end it. I truly believe that Liv and Spencer are meant for each other, but they are both in their young adult finding era where they both are trying to grow into people they are meant to be as a friend, as a lover, and for their career. And because they both are headstrong and meant for success in their perspective fields, that means sacrifice. And the sacrifice they will have to make is their relationship. And I personally feel like that's okay. Because if they are meant to be, they will find their way back to each other. But this is not the time for them to be holding each other back. I feel like they have done enough of that in their earlier, earlier seasons and enough is enough. Enough. my thing with Liv though is she always tries to sugarcoat things with Spencer to make him feel good or not hurt his feelings and it ends up putting pressure on her 
that eventually makes her explode on Spencer and he doesn't deserve the explosion. And then Spencer does this thing with Liv where he knows she wants something, but instead of him trying to find a way to push it out of her and make her open up about whatever the situation may be, he tries to avoid it and move past it and wait it out until she comes to him and lays it all out. They both like to teeter the line and it has been a revolving door with them too when it comes to all of that and it's clear as day that Liv wants to get back to her life and her friends in London and I get it okay well pause because the little text message she received from the little Ashley girl made it seem like you know it was friendly but with Liv you never really know hell it may be her lover she may be in a throuple I don't know because you never know what Liv and it's always something with her but I can't wait for that to be exposed because that Ashley girl may do a little pop-up this season but if it's not a little lover's quarrel maybe she found her new vortex in London and you know she would rather be there with them which is understandable but girl just say that the beating around the bush she's going to do this season is going to piss me off along with spencer constantly brooding all over the place but anyways moving on to cool can we just give it up for cool for once just let's give it up for her you know one clap two clap three clap four well not a round of applause just a few claps okay and i'm saying that because we're just only starting this season and we know that coop has the tendency to end up pissing us off some way down the line so i don't want to give her a round of applause but i do want to give her you know a few little claps because i am proud of coop for this episode because she was real chill she was real relaxed and she was just letting things play out as far as things go with patience so we all know coop wants to get patience back and if i remember correctly the reason reason why Coop was even able to find patience after her stabbing is because she was trying to meet up with her to let her know that she wants to get back with her and it's been a year and three damn months and Coop hasn't said a word to patience she you know she's just trying to be the person that you know that's there in patience corner but not bombard her with you know her own personal feelings and I love that and I respect that because patience has been through a tragedy and it's going to take a while for her to get over it and through it no matter what she tells people or what she thinks and the fact that coop respects her process so much to the point that she took a step back from putting her feelings above patient's tragedy is really f and this is the type of character development i love and i look for because any other time coop definitely would have jumped out with the whole so yeah i know you went through something life changing but 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 i felt the need to tell you i still love you and i want to be with you and she didn't do that so you know that's growth as far as patience go, I feel so bad for her and the situation she is going through because not only have she's been battling getting over being stabbed by a damn psychopath, <laughs> but the same psychopath has the opportunity to not serve any time based on a damn technicality with the evidence presented to defend patients. Honestly, I say it's a racist motive. I don't know why, and they haven't given us much detail about it, but for some reason, it feels racist because there's just no way this girl should get off. None at all, point blank, period. But according to the news, unauthorized personnel handled the camera footage that had Miko um, at the scene where, you know, she stabbed patients, and it was thrown out. But how does that even happen? We need more details, and we need it now because something isn't adding up. And like I said, it feels racist. And if not racist, classes. Because maybe Miko family knows people in high places or something. But it's just wrong and patients do not deserve to be going through this mess. I don't like it. Because of patient situation, Layla has been antsy and bothered. And in the beginning, I thought it was because, you know... She wanted to create an extra safe environment for patients since the two of them is always around each other and also because I know Layla has been through something similar to what patients been through. So of course in my mind I'm thinking you know she empathizes with patients which in a way she kind of does. But really Layla has been feeling like she is the reason patients was assaulted because she was the one that in a way protecting patients as a manager so that was overpowering the empathy that she loki shared with patients which is loki crazy to me because layla literally did nothing wrong but also layla lives in this like la la rich girl fantasy sometimes that she let her guard down or she make moves that isn't thoroughly thought out especially for someone that has money but not backing or protection for crazy situations that her and patients was put into 
But I say all that to say that the last thing I thought was Layla thinking everything was her fault as far as what happened to Patience. But Patience had to let her know that it wasn't her fault and she never blamed her for it. And to be honest, I love that friendship. I never really paid attention with it. But now that like it's like we're growing, us as an audience is growing up with them. I kind of, I'm noticing it a lot more now. And I like that friendship. Granted, she's been her manager for some while. But I don't know, for some reason, I really noticed it in this episode. But listen. I need both of their asses to go and take some damn karate classes, Taekwondo, baby. I don't know. But they need to go and take something so they can learn how to protect themselves and hold their own. We can keep having these same type of situations and keep having this type of stuff go on. We don't see them learning how to defend themselves because this has happened too many times. Like, y'all got to do something about that. Y'all got to learn it. And we need to see y'all learn it so we know the next time it happens, y'all are prepared. But beyond that, I am so excited to see how things will go with Layla's self-titled new lounge slash club that she you that used to be Lost in Cafe. One thing about Miss Layla though, she is always going to keep her entrepreneurial spirit going, and baby, that is the true life of the rich. Okay, if one idea fell, let let's have another one. If that one fell, let's have another one. Okay, we are gonna keep going doing this until something sticks. Now, although I can't relate, <laughs> I can say it's motivating because, baby, my kids will relate one day, okay? That's for sure, okay? Motivation. One reason that I really like the idea of Layla having this new club because it is showing the growth of the group in a different way. I feel like the cafes and little hangout spots they used to always be at resembles the life that they had as kids and, you know, how they was in high school, you know, learning and growing up in the lounge slash club, gotta say slash club. In the lounge slash club is showcasing, you know, their grown up era and adulting era. So the places they usually frequent at are growing up with them. And I love it because we are not drinking milkshakes and smoothies anymore. We are on to whiskeys, lemon drops, and cognac, okay? Now getting into Asher, his girl Jamie, and his new baby they have. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I do, y'all, I cannot believe JJ isn't on this season. Well, at least I think he won't be on this season because they say he is on like some type of sabbatical or something like that. Child. I don't know what JJ got going on, but it's on brand for us not to know what JJ has going on because it's JJ. But I hope he do come back because that's who I really, really want to see some damn character development from. It's JJ. Like, JJ took us through too much last season. We need to see the growth. We need it's It's imperative that we do. So maybe they'll bring him up later on in the season. We'll see. But back to Asher. So Asher is his new dad. And because of the time skill, we have missed the birth of, you know, his child. Well, him and Jamie's child and things of that nature. But we are now seeing how him having this baby is taking a toll on him and Jamie because they are in school, starting new careers and just figuring out life as new parents. And it's hard and difficult because they are leaning on their friends for help and support. But it's a struggle because everyone has their own life and can't always be, you know, looking out for the baby, even if they want to. Granted, I'm sure if JJ was there, he'll always be around to babysit. But then again... I don't know if a person with common sense will really leave their child with JJ for a long period of time. But you know, that's neither here or there. So yeah, Asher is feeling the pressure of being a new dad and also in the process of potentially being a full-time coach and not just a student coach. And I just wonder how everything is going to play out with his storyline this season because the guy who was the head coach passed away. So I want to know how they are going to maneuver that. The situation is so sad and he was an important factor for the show and for Asher. And as of right now, we have them in the scenes and on the show helping Asher being like Asher's child granddad or goddad and things of that nature but i wonder how that is going to officially affect everything moving forward in the next couple of episodes well really the whole entire season and see over here my brain is moving and wondering if just if y'all i don't know bear with me if coach kenny is going to end up at a school with asher and become the head coach there because it's clear as day that gau is trying to push him out gau and the boosters is trying to push coach kenny out because you know they never really wanted him as the head coach to begin with and now they are bringing in this new coach to slowly push him out i don't know y'all i'm just throwing my crazy thoughts out there but anyways enough of my rambling i want to hear from y'all so like this video and show your girl some love sound 
sound off in the comments with your thoughts and let me know how you felt about this episode. Hit that notification bell and last but certainly not least, subscribe and join the Queen of Baby. Bye.